Hi, it's Heather from Thicket Works, and today I'm going to share with you the process that I used to create this miniature armillary sphere. Creating this piece was incredibly satisfying, and I can't wait to share the process with you. This is just one of the many garden accessories created for this Secret Garden series. So let's find out how it was put together. This process begins with a ruler and regular midweight cardstock. I'm cutting several strips of cardstock that are 3 seconds of an inch wide and 8 and a half inches long. Technically, you only need three of these, but I like to always have extras on hand. Once the cardstock strips have been cut, Use your fingernail or the blade of a pair of scissors to create curly cues. This will make it a lot easier for us to wind these into rings. Because these rings need to be in graduated sizes, I decided to use these 7 16th, one half of an inch, and 9 16th of an inch wide sockets in order to form the basis for each of the rings. In order to function properly, the rings do need to be graduated. If you create them all at the same size, once you attempt to assemble them, you'll find that the outer ring is not large enough to enclose the inner rings without creating compression and distortion in those circles. It's also important to use bases for creating these rings that have smooth non-porous surfaces so that once the rings have been created they can be easily detached and removed from the jig. This is the kind of thinking that makes it possible to look around your environment and find unconventional tools that will help you to bring your creative visions to life. After tacking the end of each cardstock strip to your form. Allow the glue to set up for a few moments. Here I'm using Aileen's super thick tacky glue because it grabs really quickly and forms a good bond. Then continue to wind the paper strip around until you have completed a ring and gently remove it from each jig in turn. For this project, you'll only need three of these rings. However, I'm sure you can think of many, many ways that these little cardstock rings could come in handy in many of your creative projects. So let your imagination go wild. Look around your environment for ways to utilize common items that are already there to help you achieve results like this. Once the rings have been formed and you've allowed them to set up for a few minutes, it's time to create holes in the opposite sides of two of the innermost rings. Now here I'm demonstrating on the largest ring, but you won't need to do that. I'm using a pin vise and a needle tool. The needle tool initially creates a divot in the interior of the ring that I can then use to help guide the drill bit of the pin vise through the center of the material. And once that initial hole is made, the pin vise is removed and then inserted through that same hole from the exterior so that it can be directed to the opposite edge of the same ring, creating holes that line up directly across from each other in each of the rings. Thread the two smaller rings onto a piece of wire or an eye pen like you see me demonstrating here. And once they're threaded onto the wire, affix them in place with Popper's Bondo, a drop of super glue, and a little bit of baking soda. This creates an instantaneous and permanent bond. Once the inner circles have been spaced correctly and bonded, the next step is to slide the outermost ring across this globe shape perpendicular to the first two rings, and then to bond that outer ring 
into place, again using Popper's Bondo. Working in this manner is so helpful because there's no wasted time waiting for adhesives to cure. Having the ability to create an instantaneous rock hard bond is so cool. Ensuring that you can work with the piece you've just created right away. I love that. To create a firm base for my armillary sphere, I'm using a Tim Holtz compass coin, a three inch wooden candlestick, some jewelry findings, and a glass cabochon that has had a fun copper gear adhered to the base of it. These pieces will work together with a regular toothpick to create a convincing stand for the armillary sphere and to create a finish for it that is going to harmonize with the other elements in the Secret Garden series but also be distinct and somewhat metallic I'm turning to Midnight Copper Embossing Powder by Lindy's Stamp Gang. This is one of my favorite embossing powders. As you can see, it creates a really dark, rich metallic surface. And I'm experimenting with using thinned PVA glue as the adhesive for the embossing powder. And frankly, I'm really liking the way that this has turned out. Now that that initial finish has been created, I'm going to turn my attention to building the base. And again, I'm using Popper's Bondo to affix a clipped toothpick into a bead cap. And once that's set up, I'll be sliding this cylindrical spacer bead onto the toothpick as well, leaving a little bit exposed so that I could add one additional rounded spacer bead on the very top. This will create a kind of socket that the outer ring of the armillary sphere will fit into, like that. In the meantime, I'm adding the same embossing powder finish to the base a little at a time by adding thinned PVA glue onto the surface of the metal components and then melting the embossing powder into place. One of the distinctive features of many armillary spheres is an arrowhead at one end of this central crossbeam and stylized fletching or feathers at the other. For this process, I'm turning to the same cardstock we used to create the rings. And with a pair of sharp snips, I'm cutting those stylized shapes out of folded cardstock. Folded so that these pieces can be wrapped around the ends of the wire, enclosing it, and then glued into place permanently with Popper's Bondo. This aspect is very finicky and I certainly didn't get it right on my first attempt. But after a couple of tries and the help of crosslock tweezers and a needle tool, it came together very well. Handling these absolutely tiny pieces of paper is definitely a challenge. But with the help of a couple of tools and super glue, it becomes manageable. Once the piece has been put together, now I can use a flat needle file to help sharpen those shapes and give them those characteristic outlines. Now that the arrowhead and fletching are in place, it's time to apply the same embossed finish to each of these components as has been added to the rest of the armillary sphere. Embossing powder is applied over a layer of thinned PVA glue and then melted with a heat tool. You may notice some bubbling. Now, in my case, that's not a problem. And when I don't like how bubbled the outcome is, 
I can simply smooth out the surface while it's still warm with a metal tool. I really wanted a distressed and corroded surface and this process is creating that for me beautifully. Now that the finish has been applied to all the components, it's time to mount the armillary sphere on the base. And for this, I'm using regular super glue. Pressing that outer ring onto the socket created by the uppermost spacer bead and allowing it to cure. Now it's time to build the very bottom of the base. 3-in-1 Advanced Craft Glue is a good choice for joining these two metal pieces together. And I'm using the same adhesive to mount the rounded bead cap onto the upper surface of the glass cabochon. I'm allowing this piece to cure overnight. Now, the tendency may be for it to slip and slide in the first few minutes, so babysit it for a little while, making adjustments as necessary before allowing it to cure. In the meantime, I'm coating the three inch tall wooden candlestick with heavy black gesso. This will make an excellent base coat for adding Renaissance brown, a rich bronze color. Once the Renaissance brown has dried, I'm combining a dark green and a dark teal to dry brush areas of this pedestal. On top of the greens, I'm adding a detail layer of straight turquoise acrylic craft paint. This helps to simulate the sort of chalky corrosion that can occur on bronze items in the wild. I love creating these little streaks. First with the dark greens and then coming back over the top with the lighter color of the turquoise. In between layers of the faux verdigris, I also enhance the bronze areas as well. And before proceeding, I'm going to seal and protect this paint job by using a layer of triple thick gloss glaze that will dry almost immediately. Now I'm continuing the same faux verdigris treatment onto the upper portions of the piece. This is a little stark and so I'll be knocking it back in the next steps. Changes in surfaces between matte and shiny can really help bring a piece to life. So to help knock back this verdigris, I'm using a thinned layer of heavy black gesso. This is going to dry to a very matte finish and it will contrast nicely with the glossiness of the underlying layers. And then finally, I'm adding a glaze in the form of the Renaissance Brown thinned with clear floor polish to portions of both the pedestal itself and the upper surfaces of the armillary sphere. Now that is a mellow and delicious looking faux verdigris, to my eye anyway. Initially, I was just going to glue the metal base of the armillary sphere to the top of the candlestick, but as this piece evolved, I realized I wanted to create a more substantial tabletop-like effect. So for this, I used a disc of foam core board, a supporting disc of medium weight chipboard, and an outer ring of Dresden trim. These three pieces layered together will be quite substantial and will help to create a more formal piece in the long run. A quick coat of thinned black gesso and then I can mount this tabletop onto the top of the candlestick and then bond it firmly in place with Popper's Bondo. Yep, that's not going anywhere. I really like the way that the Dresden trim dresses this piece up. 
and I'm adding this same embossing powder in a patchy layer right over the Dresden trim before mounting the armillary sphere onto the surface with Popper's Bondo. And now all of the portions of the base are going to be harmonized with a layer of UV resin. This is not necessary, it's just something I wanted to experiment with. So little by little, I'm adding a layer of the UV resin and pausing to cure it using a UV flashlight and then adding a little bit more until the entire cabochon is coated and then I extend the UV resin down over the supporting coin structure at the bottom. Yep, I'm completely in love with that final finish. I love the way that the colors have been captured under the magnifying effects of the resin layer. Now I'm using PVA glue applied full strength to areas of the surface where I want it to appear as though moss has taken hold. And again, I'm using pulverized cilantro leaves as my moss substitute of choice. After I've applied the cilantro, I use my fingertip to tap very lightly against those ground herbs. This embeds them firmly into the adhesive and creates a smoother upper surface. I just love that. A few tiny touches of moss on the sphere itself and the project is complete. The juxtaposition of the rich organic color and texture of the cilantro against the shiny glassy finish of the UV resin, the faux metallic surface on the armillary sphere itself, and the verdigris bronze pedestal all work together to create a piece that I really, really feel proud of. I hope that some of the techniques and methods offered in this little demonstration are of use to you in your own work. As always, I'm so grateful that you've taken the time to hang out with me today. Thank you. Until next time. Bye.